Hello friends, welcome to Ashok IT. This is Shaker, Java trainer at Ashok IT. In this video, we are going to discuss the three types of interfaces in Java. The three types of interfaces are, one is a normal interface, and the second one is marker interface, and third one is a functional interface. A normal interface means which can have more than one abstract method. It could be two or even could be more than two. If you take marker interface, it, it does not contain any methods, which is like no methods in that interface. And even it does not have any constants as well. Basically, it is an empty interface and that is called marker interface. A functional interface means which contains exactly a single abstract method. We call in shortcut SAM, SAM. It can have multiple constants. It can have default methods. It can have static methods also, but it should contain only one abstract method that is considered as functional interface. Normal interfaces are going to have multiple abstract methods and the classes which are implementing that interfaces, they have to override all the abstract methods of that interface. Otherwise, that class should be declared as abstract class if it is missing overriding of any of the abstract methods. Like for example, if you take the collection programming, we have a list interface or we have a set interface or we have map interface. So they all have more than one abstract method. Okay, you are finding a bundle of abstract methods in those interface. They are all examples for the normal interfaces. And if you consider serializable interface in Java or clonable interface in Java, actually they are marker interfaces. They don't have any abstract methods. They have no methods and no constants. Basically, they are empty interfaces. And these marker interfaces are used to mark a class that its object should get some special behavior. Either it is implemented by programmer or could be proved by the Java runtime environment. Let's consider a simple example. Suppose if you take a person who has a VAP pass. So a person holding the VAP pass is nothing but he is going to get some special behavior than a normal person. So holding that VAP pass is marking that this person is a VAP. Similarly, in programming of Java also, if you want to add some special behavior to the objects of a specific class, you should mark that class as a special by implementing it from marker interface. And functional interfaces are provided for functional programming in Java to promote the functional programming in Java. You no need of writing a class to implement the functional interface. Even you can also provide implementation by creating a Lambda expression. A Lambda expression is just defines a functionality for a particular functional interface. So now let's see how the three types of interfaces can be created manually with the help of example. Let's move on to the screen. I would like to create one new package into my Java project. Let's say types of interfaces and we have SRC folder and here I'm creating a new package in dot Ashok IT. And now here I want to create one new interface option I will select here and I want to create a just normal interface and for example I am just creating interface name as IOT device I would like to make it as a normal interface which has two abstract methods consider public void connect and public void disconnect Okay, now this is a normal interface because it has more than one abstract method. If any class which implements IOT interface, now it has to override the two methods that is connect and disconnect. Now, if I'm trying to create one more interface and the interface name just I want to use like some name, consider I'm creating my own called persistable. 
but I am not going to add any methods here. No methods and no constants I am defining in this class. Now, this is going to be an example for marker interface. And now I want to create another interface. And now here I am writing it as formatter. And in this, I am just going to create only one abstract method. Consider it is like a format method. And it is going to have some parameters if required. Consider it has two parameters, string str1 and string str2. Now consider this interface does not have any more than one abstract method. It, it has exactly one single abstract method. That's why it is called functional interface. And in Java, from Java 8 version, to mark that it is a functional interface, we have annotation called at function interface. So by adding this interface, always we want to make this interface as functional interface. In future, by accidentally, if any new abstract method is added to this interface, then it is going to violate the functional interface concept. So Java compiler should throw or generate an error. So for that, we are going to write annotation called at functional interface. Now, if I want to create implementation classes for this IoT device, for example, I am going to create one implementation class for IoT device. I am creating a class. Consider the class I am just going to write is smart light. And this class implements this class implements an interface called IoT device. Okay. Now, I would like to override two methods of IoT device. Uh, the one that I would like to override is okay connect and the other one is a disconnect the two methods i'm trying to override them now here i just want to write one assert statement saying that connected to smart light and the other one is assert disconnected from smart light okay now, this is the class which implements IoT device. IoT device is a normal interface, but I have another interface called persistable. And for example, I'm just going to create one more Java class. A new class I'm just creating and consider my Java class name is user settings. Now, this class implements persistable interface. Actually here, I am not going to override any methods of persistable as it does not have any methods and even it does not have any constants. But my user settings is having some attributes like the username, first name, sorry, user first name, last name, user ID or email address and some methods which are related to user settings. Now, since user settings class implements persistable, in my application, if the class implements persistable, if the if an object is of type persistable, then I will like to save it into a database. Or if it is not implements persistable, then I would like I do not want to save it in the database. So when I am writing the code, I can check whether this object belongs to persistable type or not. If yes, then I will like to save it. And if not, I do not want to save it. For example, I'm creating another class also like user settings. I'm also going to write system settings. One class I'm going to create now. Consider my class name is system settings. But this class has its own attributes and also its own methods. Now, but it is not implementing the persistable interface. So I do not want to store an object of type system settings class into the database because it is not a persistable type. So like this, we can add some special behavior to the objects of a particular class if it is marked by implementing the marker interface. That's how the marker interface will work. Okay. 
and coming to the other one. Let's say consider I have a formatter which is a functional interface and I can provide implementation for this interface by creating lambda expression. Functional interfaces are provided and the lambda expressions are provided to provide they promote the functional programming in Java. So now we are going to look into how we can able to implement this formatter by creating a lambda expression. To write lambda expression, first I should start with arguments, then arrow token, then I should define the body and return type of the method is void. So the body of the lambda expression should just contain the functionality but should not return any value. So let's say I'm just going to create a new Java class. Consider the class name is test and I just want to write main method inside the main. I would like to provide implementation for this function interface called formatter by using lambda expression. So now formatter, formatter, formatter is my formatter is my interface just I would like to okay formatter consider f is equal to then I am writing the two parameters like str1 str2 then arrow token then I am defining the body and I want to print the str1 and str2 in uppercase the given two strings should be printed in uppercase that's what formatting I would like to do dot to uppercase and it also should print the value in two uppercase so this is the functionality that I would like to define by implementing formatter. So this functionality can be implemented through lambda expression. Now this lambda expression can be stored into a variable of type formatter. Now wherever it is needed, we can just provide this lambda expression as a functionality to that method as a parameter. This is called passing the functionality as an argument to a method. This is called functional programming. Okay. Now, for example, I'm just creating a new method inside this test class itself, which accepts a formatter type as parameter. So I am creating another static method, public static or even I can take private also. It is just helper method and it is a helper. Method name is helper. Return type is void helper. It accepts a parameter of type formatter and reference name variable name can be FTR and now it is just going to print that call the method of formatter FTR dot format of providing the first string Ashok IT and the second string Java. Okay, now I would like to call this method. It's a static method. So since it's a static method, we can directly call this method in the main and it is going to accept a parameter and the parameter is of type functional interface. So we can provide the functionality as a parameter which is defined through lambda expression. I have already stored this functionality into a reference variable. Now I can pass this reference variable as a parameter. So now I'm going to call the method helper and I'm going to pass the parameter as f. Now let us run this test class and check what the output that we are going to get. Now the output I'm going to get is the first string will be printed in uppercase and even the second string also printed in uppercase. As you can see Ashok IT and Ashok and next one is Java. The two strings are printed in uppercase and this is how we can provide the implementation for the functional interface by using lambda expressions like this there are three types of interfaces. The conclusion normal interfaces then second one is marker interfaces and third one is function interface. These are the three types of interfaces in Java programming. A normal interface can have more than one abstract method. A marker interface has no methods and even no constants as well. And a function interface is going to contain exactly one single abstract method. It can also contain many default methods or many static methods which we can write into an interface from Java 8 version. But it should contain always only one abstract method that's called single abstract method. This is the difference that you can find. Thank you for watching it.